Hello everyone, welcome back to another Naraka Blade Point video. This is OSK and I am back. Today we're going to discuss Naraka in 2023, specifically about the absolute state of the game. As everyone does around this time of year, it's time to reflect on what 2022 did well and what 2023 will have in store, specifically what I want it to have in store for Naraka Blade Point. In this video, we're going to go over what Naraka has done well, what it has done wrong, and what I wish would happen in the future so that it can become better. As always, if you like what you see and want to see more of it please be sure to like the video and subscribe maybe comment and share as well you can also join as a channel member down below and without further ado follow the socials and let's get to the video the first thing we'll go over is what naraka has done really well this is specifically what does not need to change and what can stay the same for 2023 going forward and to start i believe that the combat is a no-brainer barring any network issues or ping issues that we'll talk about later Combat fundamentally is a really fun and fast system and I really appreciate the sort of lopsided combat triangle that we have going on. You have your focus attacks, your normal attacks, and your parries, but it's not a rock, paper, scissors scenario. You also have spacing, you have dodges, you have so many other different mechanics that mix in with that combat triangle that really makes this thing fast paced and varied. Not to mention each weapon has its own mechanic and there's also combos to be had. So all in all, I think that combat itself along with character skills and ultimates does not really need to be changed going forward. Of course, balancing is always an issue that needs to be brought up and that needs to be tweaked. But in terms of general combat, I think it's done pretty well. In that same vein, I think that the character designs have done really well so far as well. What I'm referring to is the look of each character, the moveset of each character, and how they affect the meta in both solos and trios. Now, obviously, Naraka has made some bad steps. I believe that Zipping Ying on release is an obvious example of this. And of course, I'm sure every player at some point has fallen victim to a Tarka Infinite. I see these things as more of balancing issues rather than character designs. I think that the ability to eat through normal attacks is actually a pretty great ability if you balance it correctly like that. I have now. And same thing with Tarka G's ability to dash out of pretty much anything, any move, any disadvantage state while he's in his ultimate with that caveat, I think is just fine. Having an iframe elbow, maybe not, but I think in general, the character design is varied enough and interesting enough to warrant pretty much playing any character you can get your hands on. With the exception of maybe Tianhai and Yue Shan, I don't feel like I'm playing the same character every time that I queue up with a different one. So in that vein, I think it does pretty well. Of course, we can talk about how Fairy Shin is a bit immersion breaking, but I won't in this video. And of course, we can't go without saying a huge congratulations and a huge thank you to the cosmetics team. They always knock it out of the park. You guys are amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Animations also look reasonably smooth, so I will consider that a plus in this category. I'll also give praise to the new map that came out, Hollaroth. I think it's really well done. It has gone through a bit of some issues with optimization. I think that's more of a general Naraka optimization problem, as no matter if I'm on Morris Isle or Hollaroth, I do always seem to eat up all of my CPU and if I have something like Google Chrome open it's just not going to be a good time for me so optimization is something we can touch on on what Naraka needs to improve but in terms of map design and all the different locales and everywhere you can go the varied heights all that sort of stuff I think that they do very well with the map design and of course Realm of Yang was a great addition I'm really glad that they did it hopefully that stays in the future and it's not a seasonal thing and of course we can't really talk about Naraka without talking about the absolute unchained movement that it has in its gameplay it's bar none the best thing about the game I can't cannot praise it enough. It's fluid, it's fast, and it just makes every single moment of playing Naraka that much more enjoyable, especially when you master it. So those are the main things I wanted to highlight about the game in 2023. It's got its core gameplay pretty much down, barring any network issues, but now we're going to talk about what Naraka does very poorly and what it can improve on in the future. Of course, if you ever played Naraka Blade Point, you would know that it does suffer from a lot of ping issues outside of its home region in China. If you've played Naraka for any amount of time in the Western regions like Europe or North America, or if you've even seen other creators, I mean, this is not a secret. Naraka does have ping issues and it's not a small thing. I think that Gian Jorio has a really good video outlining everything as well as Psycho Waffle. But the problem with ping is that there are certain ranges where some things work and there are certain rages where other things work. So the higher your ping, typically the more you're able to get away with. For example, on higher ping, you have access to some combos that you can't get on lower ping and vice versa. Also on higher ping, sometimes the server will 
completely ignore any attempt to parry. And there's a reason why this is a big pain point for players that are suspected of using VPNs from other regions and sort of ruining the game from that standpoint. The fact of the matter is it does affect gameplay in a big way and because it's not a shooter and you can't really insta-kill anybody and you're kind of relying on the game working well for you to really get a kill on it, it's just all the more frustrating whenever you die to it. So hopefully in that vein we get a little bit better infrastructure coming over to the western side of things and in that same vein I really hope that they address the player population problem. So currently at my rank, which by the way is comparatively not very high, about rank 300, I am sitting in queue for anywhere from 8 to 15 minutes during prime time. For those of you that don't know, North America prime time is anywhere from about 4 p.m. central to about probably a little past midnight. And where I'm at, if you try to queue up at any time before or after prime time, you will simply not get any queues. The queue time is programmed to send you a brief message saying nobody's on after about 30 minutes of trying to look for a match. And whenever you get this, it's a little bit disheartening because the game is quite literally dead in my region outside of prime time. Now I can start a custom match and get on with a few friends that way, or I could also go into free practice and practice some combos, but it's not the same as being able to play the actual ranked game. So Naraka Blade Point clearly has a player population problem, and I believe that this is due to the lack of marketing in the West paired with the pay to play model with other microtransactions in the game. Since day one, it's been a pain point for many potential players that Naraka Blade Point is pretty much the only battle royale on the market that comes with an upfront price point. And in this vein, why would you pay $20 to play a battle royale whenever everything else is free? That's not even to mention the fact that the game has microtransactions complete with premium currency and all that sort of stuff that you would expect out of a free to play model, but it still charges the $20. Now, if you were to ask me at launch, I said, that $20 is well worth it for a game like this because it's just that different and it does play that well, or at least it did back then. Nowadays, I believe that the game is really hurting for players here in the West, so I would not be surprised and I would really hope that they start exploring the free-to-play option even more. And it's not like the game can't become popular if given enough attention over here. In Naraka's home region of China, there are millions of players that play every day and also the World Championship just concluded, which included a $1.5 million prize pool. So it's not like they don't have the funds and they don't have the popularity to make this happen. So hopefully in the future Naraka does explore the free to play model and markets the game more so we can get some more players in here so we can have shorter queue times and also a better experience overall. And I do understand the worry of the game becoming free to play that will invite or will incentivize hackers and cheaters to do their thing more often but I think at this point we're hurting too much from long queue times and also just from players saying no at the price point by itself. So I hope we can explore the free to play model. I think it is the way to go from now on. And I guess we can go ahead and get into features that I would like Naraka to have and also just changes that Naraka should make in the future since I'm already discussing it. If Naraka does see the upsurge of players from a game becoming free to play and marketing the game more frequently here in North America, I would hope that they would invest some more money into building out the server infrastructure so that we can have less ping in our own regions. Me personally, I live in Tennessee. It's not that far away from the East Coast, but I still experience 50 to 60 ping any time that I jump into a match. For comparison's sake, in the home region of China where the game plays much smoother, the ping over there is an average of 20 to 30. So my ideal scenario would be to make the game free to play, market the game more so we have more players, and hopefully if it's high enough, we can invest into more server infrastructure. That would be my ideal scenario. I would also like the game to have a more meaningful report system. I believe that most of the time the game doesn't even really do anything with its report system. And also if for whatever reason, the name that you're trying to report has characters that you're unable to copy paste or for that matter type out. I would hope that in the future there's some sort of recent players list you can go through that will assist you in that system. And I guess in that same vein we don't really have a recent players for the solo mode so like if a player that you just played against if you had a good match you want to friend them there isn't really a way to do that unless you manually search them on the leaderboard if they're even on the leaderboard at all. So that's something I hope to see changed. Also I don't really know the costs associated with this but I would really like it if Naraka Blade Point had a replay system. Currently the only way to go over footage is to record the footage yourself and then replay it from your own perspective. So I'm hoping in the future that Naraka Blade Point introduces an omniscient replay system. Just so I can see rotations of players where they're going for loot and that sort of thing so I can get some more info and improve at the game from there. I mean heck even PUBG whenever it first released had a replay system so I would hope that that is something that Naraka Blade Point could do given that it's a cash cow at this point. Now that that's been said I'll just give you my full version 
verdict for how Naraka Blade Point is in 2023, I think it's really good. Um, this current patch that we're on right now does have issues with ping, probably the worst that I've seen in the game. But as long as I can get that corrected, I think Naraka is in a good place to go forward. It's got great combat, the movement is unparalleled, the maps are varied, character design is some of the best that I've seen, and it's just overall a really good experience when it works. When it bugs out or it doesn't work, it is very painful. In the current landscape of games that are out right now, especially Battle Royale, I do not see any reason for Naraka to keep pushing its $20 price point. I'm not really sure how the law works in terms of making it free to play for certain regions only and making it pay to play for others, but I think at this point, at least for the West, it needs to go free to play for it to see any more growth. Queue times are much longer than other games currently, especially the popular ones, and the $20 price point at this point, I mean, you already have microtransactions, so why would you need an entry price? So hopefully we see that change here coming up soon. And before I forget, yes, I do believe that the game will eventually release for PlayStation. However, I have seen the optimization both on PC and on Xbox. And personally, while I know that there's a lot of PlayStation people waiting to play the game, you do not want to play it when it's unoptimized. So it is my hope that the devs fix this optimization problem before they release it to yet another console. As it stands currently, PlayStation is really the only major console left to release it on. So this is sort of a last chance for Naraka to have a release boot from that perspective. So if they screw this one up for PlayStation, then there's really no coming back from it. So it is my hope that they make the game free to play, they increase their optimization by a large amount, and we continue to have the same great gameplay that we've been having along with fewer network issues. If we can keep that going, I think Naraka Blade Point will be in a great state in 2023. Right now it's good, but it could be great. So those are my full thoughts on Naraka Blade Point in 2023. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And guys, sorry for being away for so long. We had a family issue come up, so I've been away for about two weeks. And by away, I mean away from my keyboard. I did have a Faria Shin guide planned to come out, and I'll still release it. It's just the basics of Faria Shin, so it's not Nothing too crazy uh, so that will be coming out here pretty shortly I think and I'm also gonna try something new by the time that this video comes out uh, it should be Tuesday and I actually plan on going live on Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays uh, starting at 6 central for Tuesday and Thursday and I haven't figured out the time for Saturday hopefully I get that figured out before then uh, but yeah, I want to start doing YouTube streams, so you might see me live after this video goes up. Again, that's Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Central, and Saturday I'll get back to you on it. And of course, the best way to stay up to date on all that is to follow the socials down below. You can join the Discord or follow me on Twitter for all these sort of updates. And with that, I'll go ahead and head out. I've been OSK, y'all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Just one drop to recover Can't stop me cause I'm the Phoenix oh,